Life on the block just hasn't been the same without our middle floor team, George and Beck. After the loss of Beck's mum, Beck and George have needed some time with their family. That missing link has widened the gulf between the upper and lower floors. So last night, the twins decided to bring the rest of the crew together for some much needed bonding. Trouble is, too much of a good thing can be a little tricky when you have to get up at dawn to face a big build. Leave me alone. Can you just tell everyone to keep the noise down? <laughs> We just tried to put in a bit of an effort and, yeah, no, it was a really good night. It wasn't uncomfortable. And... Sort of broke the ice from all the stuff that has been going on with us and the girls. Yeah, hopefully water under the bridge. Yeah. Just makes it easier. I think we said last night we have to try and do this more often. Like, every week. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time in the magical kingdom of Block, there lived a beautiful princess and a king. That'd be me. Together, we reigned over a castle that reached to the sky. Helping me build the castle were five teams of hard-working elves. One day, the princess invited the elves to her workshop and issued them with a challenge. They had to each build a magnificent bedhead, worthy of gracing a sleeping chamber. Now think very, very carefully about your designs, people, because the bedheads that you create today have to be used in one of your rooms back at the block. For six hours they toiled, sanded and sawed. Some created bedheads from cushions of gold and silver and others from glistening wood. Two of the elves, however, became lost in the dark forest and made a bedhead that belonged in the afterlife. As the sun set, Princess Shelley decreed that two teams had won. They were rewarded with purses of gold. And as the elves prepared to return to the castle, Princess Shelley reminded them of their obligation. The bedheads that you create today have to be used in one of your rooms back at the block. But not all of them lived happily ever after. Our two cops on level one are sticklers for the law and they're sticking to Shelley's rules. We're just re-fabricate, fab fabricating? We're just taking these off and recovering it. Would it be actually worthwhile to actually make another piece? We're not allowed to, we have to. You have to use that panel. But Maddie and Jared seem to be suffering from short-term memory loss. Screw that. So I was under the impression that we were allowed to change it. A little change. Is it a minute change or is it a big change? It's a big change. With the whole bedhead thing, I was just a little bit frustrated yesterday that we only found out in the afternoon that we weren't allowed to use what we did as the bedhead from the challenge because it is a, rep a replica of the same thing, pretty much. The definition of replica is a close or exact copy. I don't think so, Jared. Another team getting creative with Shelley's clear rule are Matt and Kim. The only thing they're keeping from the original is the basic idea. We bought these um, hexagon tessellating tiles that are made out of like recycled wood. So we're just going to remake or use the old frame take the MDF off and then stick these things on. Geometry wasn't my best subject at school, but I do know a square is not a hexagon. Bending the rules seems to be the order of the day. And in the penthouse, Jono looks like he's been caught with his hand in the lolly jar. Keith has noticed they've been halving the thickness of their ceiling bats. I don't even need to say nothing, do I? <laughs> And he's seen it all before. So you're compromising the insulation. The way I see it, you've taken half the bat apart. We're trying to achieve an eight-star rating here, energy rating. Right. Insulation's a big part of that. Right. It's got to be done Mickey Mouse, 100%. It's times like this that a bit more communication between the top and bottom floors 
could save a lot of headaches. It's not long before our block teams won't have to look at another bathroom tile. They're up to their fourth and final ensuite and third bedroom. Keith's builders have to stay one step ahead of the blockheads' tradies. And this week, they need to start the fit-outs for the kitchen and living areas. Trouble is, some teams have turned those areas into dumping grounds. And Keith's on the wall park. Matty and Jared's level is just... It's that, that bad with rubbish. It's just, I don't know, I've never seen anything like it. And it's always like that. I'm getting sick of it. You guys have got all night, all day, every day to clean up. The Ellie Mac doesn't go through the night. Yeah, but you've got to we're not allowed to step up. on the scaffold, so where do we put it? It can't stay this way. You have to start cleaning up. Builders won't come up here. That's fine. Maddie is determined to prove that Keith is wrong about her never doing work. And nothing is going to get in her way, including hubby Jared. Where should this get stored? In that corner. No, I'm... I don't know. Leave it in there. Get rid of all this. No, just leave that. I'll do Why? it. Why? I'm, I'm, not, do... I'm not stopping for no, lunch, whatever. so I'm just going to do it. I'm not asking you to stop for lunch. Why no, you listen? But you're not doing it right now, you're... so why can't I do it? Listen to what? You just said listen and then you walked off. What am I listening but to? I don't want to talk to you when you're yelling at me. This is one clean-up it's best to steer clear of. Coming up, Maddie loses it. Oh. And two blockheads return. Very hard with that, yes, I tell you. It's final bedroom and ensuite week at the block. Some people are still struggling to finish on time, while others are well on track. On level one, the bathroom is almost complete, and builder Sharan is even planning a couple of days off. So he's keen to get the final nod from the girls. Like a frame. Cassandra's really worried that this is boring. What can we do to jazz it up? Jazz a bit. it up. The judges have loved all the girls' bathrooms, so there's a lot to live up to. I'm losing my mind. This is <laughs> amazing. They are really the bathroom queens, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. Can we take down the tiles? Can we do it? We can. Well, it only took Louie a day to do that. He smashed it, so... Can hey, Louie, can tomorrow? you come back tomorrow? They don't like the tiles. No problem. Whatever you want. <laughs> See? It's that black strip that's putting you off. That's what it is. And it's putting me off, too. Can you just hold that? Is that all right? I need to answer. Are you sure? Yeah, no problem. Oh, thank you so much. All right, no problem. Thank you. Oh, Louie, you're the best. Thank you, Louie. No I you something because you're an idiot. Oh. Our lovely tiles are so... Thank um, you. Agreed to pull those tiles down and retile them with it a white tile. So and it much better. So much better. Our tiler did ask this morning. But I was very hungover and he shouldn't have asked me then. And then I asked you, and she oh. agreed. He should ask you like later in the day, so he could just sit there and do nothing. I was just like, yes, whatever, whatever, just do whatever. Downstairs, Maddie's tackling a barrow load. Since Keith told her off for not pitching in, she's gone overboard with her cleaning mission. I don't ask Keith workers to help me like the girls do. Don't want to go over the edge. Lucky that was the ceiling paint. Yeah, could you catch me, please? <laughs> Keith will probably yell at me again, but I've done everything I can to run down as quick as possible and clean it all up, so... <laughs> what are you doing? I dropped my wheelbarrow because I didn't want your men to help me. They often, I said, no, it'll be fine, I will do it, and then I had too much in my barrow and it tipped over and I dripped paint all the way to the bottom. Go ahead, yeah. Well, you're having a go. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna yell. It's good. You're having a go. That's what I want to see. All right. That's the outside of the building taken care of. Let's have a quick squiz at the inside. But just so you know, I'm getting this carpet up so it's easier for your boys when they're doing all the plumbing stuff and everything. Well, I know, I know you think you're fantastic, but everyone had it done yesterday. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm just make, letting you know what I'm doing. 
It's good. So it's good to see. We, I think it's getting up there with one of the tidiest slowly. There's still a bit of tidying to do, but I was on Jono and Trixie's before, and there's, they're renowned for the clean freaks, and ours is cleaner than theirs. Really? So I'm quite proud. It's pretty impressive. For our blockheads, there's still a big night of painting ahead, except for our penthouse pets, who sadly don't even have walls to paint. It was just a very hard day. I feel like some days they're easier than others, and today the motivation level on level five was quite low. We just have to kick butt tomorrow, uh -huh. basically. Yes. To get ahead, because I'm sick of struggling. <laughs> Missed an episode this week? Catch up now at 9msn.com.au forward slash the block or download Jump In to watch the block sky high wherever you are. This morning, I'm happy to say there's a full house at the block. After the tragic loss of Beck's mum, Beck and George are back and Beck's having a well-earned sleep in. To come back to the block after... I don't know, it feels like I've been gone ages. I think Tom's um, cleaned up a lot. Like, he's ripped up all the carpet, um, he's gutted all the rooms. Um, yeah, happy. At least he's, um, he's working while I'm away. Now that the Level 3 team are back together, Tom's called a catch-up meeting. You guys are back? Yep. Yeah? Yes. Moving forward? Mm -hmm. All right. Things we've got to do now before reveal, yeah? Yeah. I have to get the shopping done. Yes. So I have to get a chair, a rug, yep. a table. Yeah. Just bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Not not a lot. Yeah. But um we can do that now in the morning. Yeah. yeah. So we've got tilers in. Mm hmm Plasters are top coating. Yeah. Pretty good. Great, right, Tom. We're back. <laughs> We're back. I'm glad, man. It's pretty hard without We're you, back. mate, I tell you. No group hug. It's very group hard without you, so I tell you. It's it's very um... While George has been away. Jared's been pining for his best mate. Last night we waited up a little bit later. We finished our work, but we stayed up because we knew Beck and George were on their way back. I think Jared was very eager to see his boyfriend and was waiting on the stairs. Jared does this little whistle in the mornings to George to say coffee time. <laughs> I can't understand the whistle. Is that a yes? He's going to be here in a minute. So how's it been without me here, mate? Pretty lonely. It's good to have you back. Now I've got my coffee partner back. Exactly. <laughs> you haven't been going with anyone else, have you? No, I just go up by myself. Sit there by myself. Look like that Nigel in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't smile without you. While the boys are at play, Beck's given herself one day to get everything she needs for the third bedroom. Beck, it's going to be a good day. Stay focused. This is a bit cool. While I've been away, I have been just on my laptop and just researching a lot. So it's nice to be back here and have my mind um, focused on something else. That light is gorgeous. I really should bring George here since he wants an opinion on everything lately. <laughs> George didn't like the Ottomans Beck chose for the dressing room, and neither did the judges. You know, those Ottomans, to me, don't work. Agree. And for the first time, he's questioning her choices. Send me a photo, when you like. It's going to be an office chair. It's going to be something that looks kind of funky. You're just going to have to trust me. And the chair is not opinion. up to you, George. It's not up to you. I'm not having these fights about chairs all the time. I think because of everything that's been happening with me, usually I'm really focused and I make decisions. And I think he thinks my head's not there at the moment. So I'm hoping with this room this week I can prove him wrong because he just seems to everything that I show him he's questioning and I'm not sure about this and are you sure you like that and I'm, it's just a bit annoying. I want to win this week especially because of what's happened and especially for my mum so you know I don't like how he's doubting me a little bit. Can you trust me on this table or are you going to give me a headache like with the chair? 
I have my moments. I'm, I'm, you know, always thinking about my mum and, you know, it makes me get a bit emotional, but I'm, I've, I've got to do this. And, you know, one of the things that she said to me was, you have to, you have to finish and you have to do this for me. So it just means all that more to me now. So, you know, I know everyone's worried about me, but I'm a strong girl, I'm a big girl, and, you know, I can do it. I know I can do it. <laughs> I've got to give Beck credit for holding it together on this first day back. But sometimes, in a quiet moment, it's hard to keep emotions at bay. of a long hot day and down in the car park the blockheads have organized a blow-up pool for a bit of relief only problem is it's looking very deflated i bought your pump oh thank you oh thank you beck go jared oh that's good you'll have it done in no time do you want to hold that back <laughs> stop i'm just gonna take a seat <laughs> okay no worries <laughs> Continue. <laughs> oh, yeah? You're nearly there. Yeah, you can come down and help. It's all right. Hey, if you want to swim in it, you got to help us build it. It's lucky that this isn't a pool pumping challenge. We're slowly getting there. You're going to be here till midnight? Yeah, oh, When yeah. are you planning on having a swim? Midnight swim, are you? Midnight. <laughs> Give us a go. Midnight dips. That's way too hard. All right, we'll carry on. I'm coming for a swim too. Thanks. Good job, mate. I can see I'm going to have to get this show on the road. Don't ever say that I don't do anything for you. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get this going up a bit fast and have a swim before, before the sun goes down. <laughs> Go get a hose, mate. Let's All fill right, her up. We... <laughs> that shouldn't take too long to fill up. Time to call in the cavalry. Well, what do you reckon? I love it. Will it be a bit quicker, you think? Yes. You've outdone yourself. Oh. <laughs> Two rules in the pool, no diving and no weeing. <laughs> uh, I've broken one rule. <laughs> I didn't see you dive. <laughs> Cool and cooled off in 38 degree temperatures, and we've got a beer in our hand. I'd like to, on behalf of all of us, welcome George and Beck back to the block. Uh, an absolutely outstanding effort under the circumstances, and and uh, onward and upward, and, and hopefully we can, you know, take your mind off things and uh, and we can move forward. Thank you. We we also want to say thank you for everyone that's helped us over the last two weeks. Um, it's made it really easy for us to come back and all the painting and, you know, everything. It's just, it's made it definitely easier for us to come back here and we feel very comfortable and it's, you know, we lost someone in our family but we feel like we're coming back to a family as well. So it's definitely nice to be back. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> that cooling pool is just what the doctor ordered. And back up in their rooms, they're on fire.
Tomorrow. I found a bedhead in the bin. A bedhead? Mm -hmm. Bedhead bedlam breaks loose on the block. And they've chucked it away. It's not fair at all. As far as I'm concerned, they're totally cheated. And we finally get to the bottom of it. If you guys are concerned that we're cheating, everybody should be exposed to the same rules. They're like a bunch of kids. That's game on now, eh?